Uh, hello. <laughs> Welcome to Verbling. Hi there. I am Teacher Oakley, and uh, uh, for the next few days at this particular time slot, we're going to be talking about stress, uh, primary, secondary, and unstressed syllables in words. Uh, today will be an introduction to what syllables are and how they work in words and uh, I, I will introduce them talk about them a bit and we will practice doing syllable count and recognizing uh, the primary stress in words um, okay now uh, syllables the stress syllables largely have to be learned word by word. However, tomorrow's class, we're going to be looking at some predictors. They don't always work, but there's some general rules where we can often, very often, figure out the syllable stress in words if we're seeing the word for the first time. There are some predictors. We'll be looking at that in tomorrow's class. And in uh, the third class, at, again, at the same same time slot, two days from now, we're going to see how this concept of syllable stress translates into spoken sentences in English. It very much the same things that we do in words, we do in sentences. We have unstressed words and stressed words, which helps create rhythm. Uh, Basically, I, I, I'm attempting to show in these three classes how really starting from basic syllables, we create uh, rhythm and timing in English. Starting, starting at the start, beginning at the beginning, looking at what syllables are and how they act in a word. Um, okay. Where is everyone today? <laughs> Where are you guys? Uh, okay. Anyway, we have to start somewhere, and a good place to start is figuring out exactly what a syllable is. Uh, very simply, syllables are the beats of words, the da, 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 and they are basically represented by the vowel sounds. Um, often it doesn't really matter how we divide up a word into syllables, which exact sets we want to use, but the center of that little set of letters in a word that creates a syllable will always have a vowel sound. That's the important part. Vowels, of course, A, E, I, O, U, and the sounds that they make. Uh, okay. Uh, let me um, welcome Lena to the class. Hello, Lena. Hello, Clint. Hi, long time no see. <laughs> How are you? I'm fine, thank you. I have some break. Okay. In my learning. <laughs> okay, well, yeah, nice to see you in class again. Lena, I, we're talking about, we're going to start out talking about syllables and then we're going to talk about the stresses of syllables and words. How many syllables in Lena? <laughs> For example. Uh, syllables. Uh, yeah, how many syllables in your name? Lena, um, E, have, uh, um, uh, the sound E has syllable. Yes. yes. And? <laughs> le, le, na. Two syllables. Ah. Okay. Yes. The A. <laughs> Another vowel sound. All right. Lena, your name has two syllables, as does mine. Oakley. O. Clee. Oakley. Two Actually, syllables. two syllables. See, we have so much in common, Lena. <laughs> 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 okay. The, the class uh, was full. Very. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. They're fully booked, and you're the only one here. I don't know. Maybe we'll have some others join us. And by the way, uh, you verbling viewers out there, don't be shy. Come on in and join us. 
so that you can um, uh, also, we're going to be practicing some syllable stress. So uh, please do join us. Um, very, okay. Just because I'm kind of procrastinating, waiting till maybe we get some more students, I want to share with you an interesting little story experiment that I did that in that um, uh, has everything to do with vowel sounds and syllables. Uh, I many years ago I used to have a dog. He was a great dog, very obedient, uh, knew how to do a lot of things, and. Uh, I train him how to do a lot of things. And anyway, I saw some crazy television program, some documentary, how dogs really do not understand real language as we know it. What they understand is your tone, okay, your, your intonation. You know when you're angry, right, obviously. A dog knows if you're angry or if you're happy with it. But they also, basically, they understand the vowel sounds or the syllables. And, and they understand, to some degree, syllable stress. I, th I thought this was fascinating. So my dog, which was quite well trained, I, I experimented on my dog. <laughs> I, um, I talked to my dog, Oscar, his, was his name. And I said, uh-uh, uh-uh, i ah. Oscar lie down, and he did. Uh, 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 it. Oscar sit, and he sit. Uh, uh, a. Oscar stay, and he did. And it's amazing. Here's a stupid party trick. If you have a well-trained dog, that you can, you can make these stupid center of the syllable vowel sounds with the proper stress. And guess what? Your dog will actually obey your commands as if you were saying the full words that you normally would use. If you have a dog, try this at home. You'll be astounded to see that he will follow all your commands as well, if not better, than normal. It's very interesting. But anyway, uh, that's basically, uh, okay, the center of each part of the word is the vowel sound. And that's basically what we're looking at, these syllables. And we're going to talk about how they're pronounced. Okay, now I've procrastinated long enough. We've got some more students. So let me quickly welcome Italo. Hello. Hi, teacher. Hi. Welcome to the class. Thank you. Um, Thank you, teacher. Welcome. And Heber is with us. Hello, Heber. Hi, teacher. Hi. Good morning, evening, whatever it is. What is it? It's night. It's what night. is it where you are? Night? Okay, good yeah. evening. Yeah, all right. Yeah, thank you. Okay, and uh, hello, Heidi. How are you? Hello. Nice hello. Hello, hello. Uh, okay, let's talk about syllables and... Um, more importantly, syllable stress. We've talked about what syllables are. The beats of words, the center of the syllable is the vowel sound. Now, the, maybe the vowel sound will just be, it'll be the same vowel sound. For example, the word visited, I, I, I. it's really the same sound, I, vi, zi, tid, vi, zi, tid, vi, zi, tid, visited. Okay, it doesn't have to be a totally different vowel sound to be a new syllable. Uh, Italo, how many how many syllables in visited? Uh, visited, visited. Uh, four, four syllables? Uh, no. Vi uh, three, three. Yeah, visited. It's the same vowel sound over and over again, but three different beats, right? Um, separated by consonants. In English, and by the way, related not directly, but semi kind of related, one important thing to remember in English, in English we have, it's not possible to have two vowel sounds in a row that are not separated by a consonant. It's just not possible. Um, 
what we do is we use what's called a glide. Um, a glide is either Y or a W sound to separate. Eh? Um, to separate the two vowel sounds. Okay, for example, um, for example, Heidi, uh, no, sorry, I'll come to you in a second. A bear, um, in the word society, how many syllables? Society, hi, society. In the society. word what? Society. Society. Uh. How many syllables? Yeah. Uh, four. So, si, yet, t. Very good. Excellent. Notice that uh, between between the uh, I and the E sound, there's a Y. So, si, yet. Society, right? Society. Even though those are two vowel sounds next to each other, we separate them. We don't ever allow two, two vowel sounds in a row in English. Um, even when we're joining two words together in a sentence. Uh, Heidi, uh, can, you, can you read that in the verbaling chat, what I just wrote? Go on. Uh-huh. Okay. One one more time. Go on. Go okay. All right. We these two words would be very closely joined together in a sentence. Mm -hmm. And what sound do we have between the O in go and the O in on? There's a sound in the middle. Well, uh, well, it's like a W sound. Go on, wah, 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 wah. Go on, right? That's their, our glide, Y or W. So, all right, go on. Two syllables. So, society, four syllables. All right. Anyway, the vowel, each individual vowel sound designates a syllable. Now, uh, the we're going to talk about stress, syllable stress. Uh, okay, I'm going to do a little screen share on and off here with you as I talk about this. And we're going to practice it. Um, okay, uh, any word has more than one syllable, there's always one syllable that has greater stress than the others. Or you can think about it in another way, even a one-syllable word, well, that one syllable has stress pretty much um, in multiple syllable words there's always one syllable that has the most stress or what's called primary stress okay primary stress uh, always in every word that has more than one syllable uh, for example coffee is stressed on the first syllable, cough, coffee. It has greater prominence than the second syllable. We'll talk about specifically, we'll talk about that in just a second. The word enormous, stressed on the second syllable, nor. Uh, okay, just quick example. Um, words can be stressed on the first syllable, second syllable, third, fourth, whatever. Um, Always uh, is always stressed on the first syllable. <clears throat> Alternative, ter gets most of the stress. Correspondent, uh, correspondent has four syllables totally, and the third syllable gets the stress. Environmentally, all right, fourth syllable stress. Fine. Um, <clears throat> notice. The demarcation, the little uh, apostrophe, okay, um, this is very important. 
when you're you look up a word in the dictionary and you want to see where the stress is or which which syllable gets emphasis uh, it's always the in the dictionary you'll see this little mark up in the air here this little apostrophe in front of the stressed syllable okay it's in front of tur in alternative it's in front of spawn in correspondent um, okay that designates when you look it up if you're trying to figure out how it should be pronounced that designates the the stress syllable or primary stress uh, again uh, it really doesn't make any difference how you divide up the syllables if you're writing them down it really doesn't matter uh, up here if you want to write a dash P P E A R A P dash P P E E R app A P P dash E A R it doesn't really matter that what matters is uh, are the vowel sounds that's what's important um, okay uh, a note and we're going to talk about this some more some words longer words especially or in compound nouns we also have secondary stress alright so this is our second type of syllabus we have to be aware of actually in my opinion the best play the best way to hear secondary stress is in compound nouns like baseball uh, okay notebook cell phone uh, the second word ball in baseball has secondary stress <clears throat> excuse me also in some longer words with four or five syllables you will hear secondary stress uh, okay um, all right Secondary stress would be marked in the dictionary, for example. You can see the almost like a comma on the bottom. Everybody. Okay. Eh gets primary stress. You see it? It's it's up above the letter in front of it. Uh, the small mark below shows secondary stress. Everybody. Now, secondary stress the difference does anybody know the difference between primary stress and secondary stress anybody um, it's obviously a little weaker than primary stress but there's another one other uh, one other factor that's important it's a lot like primary stress whereas primary stress for example every Body. Base ball. Base is high, primary stress. Ball is low in pitch. It's way down here. Your voice is quite low. That's the uh, other factor. It's not stress quite as much as primary stress, but more importantly and more definable, more easy to hear the fact that it's lower in pitch. Um, sometimes we move stress around depending on the rhythm of the sentence. I'm just going to say that. We'll talk about it a lot more later. And in fact, um, in, in subsequent classes this week, showing how we actually use stress in spoken language and sentences, we're going to talk about that a lot more. Okay, stress can move around. Just let me say that for now. Um, and it's something we'll be looking at tomorrow. We'll be looking at how to predict syllable stress in words. So just a quick preview. This is one way. It's very common in, in two-syllable words to stress the first syllable in nouns and or adjectives. And, and, to, and to stress the second syllable in verbs. For example, transport. I transported him to the airport. 
we had to take a bus as transport. Transport. All right, as a noun, you stress the first syllable. As a verb, I had to transport him. Transport him. You stress the second syllable. This is very common. Um, okay, very important to... Uh, the most important thing is to get that primary stress correct. Uh, there is no general rule. However, tomorrow, again, we're going to be looking at some um, predictors, how we can often predict. There are not, uh, there's no rules, but there are some definitely, uh, there are some tendencies, which actually we're going to be looking at tomorrow. Uh, okay. Now, we've talked about primary stress, secondary stress. Let's talk about the schwa sound because we need to talk about our third and final type of syllable stress, uh, unstressed. Unstressed syllables. Okay, and to talk about that, I need to introduce you to the schwa sound. That's symbolized phonetically. The phonetic symbol is this crazy little upside down E thing. That's what that is. That represents a sound, a phonetic sound. Um, the sound, the schwa sound, is basically like neutral. Uh, it's like if you're driving a car that has a stick shift a, or manual type of car. You know, you have first gear, second gear, reverse. Uh, neutral is usually in the middle. The schwa sound is like the neutral on your car. It's in the middle. It is pronounced with the tongue absolutely in the neutral position, not too far forward, not too far back, not too high, not too low. It's extremely relaxed and short as a sound. Basically, it's just using your voice with your tongue in the completely neutral position and your lips and everything is as neutral as it can be. In other words, it's basically uh, 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 uh. Okay, the sound in about, uh, or uh, again, uh, again, uh. uh it is also when you see ER as in comparative adjectives uh, or water or colder. That ER sound is schwa R is what it is. Uh, it is used in unstressed syllables and it could and it could be spelled in a number of different ways. It could represent, you could sp speak the schwa sound to represent any uh, actual any vowel, A-E-I-O-U, or sometimes combination of vowels. Uh, let, actually, let's try some of these. Let's look at some of these. Um, Lena, first one here. Okay. Okay. Payment. Okay. Payment. Payment. Uh. 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 Yep. You got your schwa sound. Payment. Payment. Very good. Where is the stress? The uh, on primary the first stress. Syllable. Yep. On the first syllable. There a. it is. So yep. A. Pay. Yeah, yeah, it's a right. It's an A sound. Right. You got it. Payment. How many syllables in payment? Um, three syllables. Mm, no. No. <laughs> Two yeah. syllables. <laughs> Two syllables. A. Uh. Eliminate. A is one syllable. Okay. Pay. Yeah. Yep. Uh, yes, it is. Uh, yeah. If you're trying to figure out the syllables, even when it's a long word, by the way, uh, and I'm trying to figure out the syllables, I can't always just look at a really long word and go, oh, that has seven syllables. Whatever, I can't even do that. I have to count it out. I will actually use my fingers, maybe, to tap it out on the desk as I say it. Okay. It is unrehearsed. 
bowl, unrehearsable, five syllables. I have to count out each syllable. If you have to do that, don't be shy to do so. So do I, and I'm an English teacher. Um, basically, concentrating again on the vowel sounds. Um, all right. Okay. Uh, Italo, how about this next word here? Oops. Yes, teacher. Uh, famous. Very good. That the, was actually very good. The word has two syllables. Yes, it does. And uh, this, the primary stress is? Uh, Fay. First syllable. Very good. All right. So the unstressed syllable frequently is represented with the schwa sound, just the uh. Sometimes it could be uh, a short i, i, or a short e, e. Sometimes we alter that unstressed syllable sound, but it's always short, very short, very fast, quickly pronounced. I can't tell you how many times, Italo, I, I'm very impressed because because I can't tell you how many times I've heard this pronounced as fey mouse. Um, students often think that because, oh, there's two vowels, it must be important. Not true. Not at all. Um, nope. It gets pronounced as the schwa sound, fey mus, which you did very well, Italo. Very good example. Uh, okay. Uh, Hey bear. Yeah. And the next one here. Uh, corner. Okay, very good. Perfect pronunciation. And the stressed syllable is first or second. Well, okay. There's two syllables. I gave that away, obviously. Uh -huh. Okay. Which is the stressed syllable? Uh, core. Yeah. The first. The first uh, Very good. Syllable. Right. And here's a case where our schwa sound is schwa and then R. This is very obviously very common in English. You see words that end with ER and obviously um, comparative adjectives. Very common. Uh, all right. Good job. That er sound is actually. Uh, usually un an unstressed syllable sound, and it includes the schwa. Uh, Heidi, next one. Support. Okay, very good. And the stressed syllable is? The second. Second. All right, two syllables. Support. Uh, right, su. So this, this uh, unstressed Syllable with the schwa sound can be in the beginning of the word. Doesn't have to be. It could be uh, anywhere, actually. Uh, okay, very good. Uh, okay. Mm -hmm. uh, Nader, welcome to the class. Hello. Thank you. Uh, hi. Good morning. Morning. And um, okay, taking a look at the next example. Forget. Forget. Okay. Uh, and the stress syllable? Is in get. Second. In get. Yes. It so often is in verbs. Uh, okay. For, forget. Uh, notice the phonetic spelling here. And actually, it's the way you, you spelled it, just like the phonetic spelling. We actually, English native speakers, say, pronounce this, for, sometimes we don't even really pronounce the R, which is what Nader did, actually, forget. Or it's very underpronounced. Sometimes they, we say forget. I, uh, okay, I forget a lot. Um, sure, e either way, it's the schwa sound or schwa R. All right. Um, okay. Figure, even though you have U R E in the last one, okay, that is the unstressed. The figure is the first syllable stress. Figure. Uh, 
and something we're going to move on and talk about two days from now. We're going to talk about how many one-syllable words, especially um, simple words that we use for grammatical per uh, purposes or what we call function words, many of them have or are pronounced with schwa sounds, these unimportant connectives. We'll talk about that in a couple days. Okay. So much for that. Uh, let's I want to share something else with you, and then we're going to practice. We're going to do some exercises to talk about this. Uh, okay. Whoops. Hang on. Error. Error. Okay. All right. I want to show you some of the basics for uh, identifying or using, really, primary secondary and unstressed syllables. Uh, okay, there are different factors in, in using when we pronounce these stressed syllables. Uh, a stressed syllable will be louder. We will actually say this, the syllable louder. Uh, sometimes, not always, but frequently we'll actually pronounce it louder. We may, vowel length, we may stretch the vowel. Maybe not as dramatically as I just demonstrated, not like stretch, but stretch um, a little bit longer. We may do that. Vowel clarity, this is always true. Full vowel clarity, what that means, if it's an oo, it's gonna sound like oo. It's not going to be reduced pronunciation to a schwa sound, for example. It's going to sound like the vowel that it's, like the vowel sound it's supposed to represent. That's always true. And finally, in our primary stress, the pitch is high. Now, this is always true. Uh, the pitch will most certainly be higher. A, uh, Secondary stress syllable is exactly the same as primary stress with the one difference. The pitch will be low, dr dramatically lower than an unstressed syllable. Actually, this is not really right. Uh, an unstressed syllable is not really low pitch. It's really medium or neutral pitch. It's not exactly low. Uh, okay. Unstressed syllables, the, those schwa syllables we just practiced, they're quiet, or quieter anyway, by comparison. Short, now that's always true. They'll be very short. Uh, they will always be relaxed syllables. They're not always a schwa sound, but if they're not a schwa, then it's a short I or a short E Um definitely reduced and and pretty much neutral within the framework of the other sounds in a sentence for example uh, all right louder longer clearer and higher pitch is the idea uh, okay all right okay as we've already talked about you, you're gonna hear uh, you all right, we're, we're going to do this as a speaking exercise, not a listening exercise, which it was originally designed as. But, for example, we're going to look at words, two words, with this, uh, the same syllable count, how many syllables, romantic and hamburger. Okay, uh, what we're going to do, we're going to do a little exercise, we're going to figure out what syllable is stressed. First syllable, second syllable, third syllable, what have you. Uh, all right, let's 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 give this a try. Hang on. We're going to start with two syllable words here. Uh, okay. There we go. All right. Makes this a little easier to see. Okay. Where is, and we'll talk a little bit as we go along, 
Uh, all right, what I would like you to do is say the two words and then tell me where is the syllable stress in the words. Lena? Uh -huh. Okay. All right. Advice. Uh, advice complete. Uh, advice. Uh, the second uh, sound wise is All right. syllable. So we would put our little little marker there. Advise like that. Okay. Mm hmm Very good. Complete. Uh, we have unstressed syllable com and stressed fleet. Okay, but there's no L. This is actually compete. Uh, uh, compete. Sorry. <laughs> compete. Okay. <laughs> compete. So it's the same. All right. They're, they're exactly the same. Advise, compete. Okay. And here I have to say, it is very, very, very normal in verbs. It is usual, especially two-syllable verbs, to stress the second syllable. It is very usual, however, it is not universal. Please remember that. When we look at determining syllable stress, there are no universals, unfortunately. Why? Basically, I, I think, in my opinion, the biggest reason is that we borrow so many words from other languages. Um, for example, uh, French words are often, they use different, mm, the, the syllable stress is almost, well, the opposite uh, as the syllable stress in English nouns and verbs. They actually do it the other way. They usually frequently have syllable noun, um, primary stress on the second syllable in nouns and and maybe first syllable in some in a lot of verbs. So when we borrow words from, uh, from the French language, we also borrow the syllable stress. So that means all these borrowed words frequently, those are the words that are tricky when it comes to syllable stress. Uh, Italo, can you try the next one? Uh. Yes, teacher. Uh, humid. Humid. And perform. Okay, where's the, the, the syllable stress? Humid. Uh, in the humid is the first uh, syllables, is the stress. Okay. And, and perform is the second, second syllables. Okay, and there we go. Humid, of course, Italo is what kind of word? Noun, verb, adjective, adverb? Uh, adjective. Yes, it's an adjective. Humid, moisture in the air. It's very humid today. And yes, it, in fact, it is very humid today where I live. In any case, it's an adjective. Adjectives are a lot like nouns when it comes to uh, word stress. Often, not always, again, not always, but very often, um, first syllable. Okay. Hey, Bear, are you? Yes, you are. <laughs> you are back. Uh, okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, okay. All right. Please uh, pronounce these two words. Uh, discuse and moral. Um, okay. In the first word, where is the syllable stress, first or second? Um. Uh, let me let me see. Um, this kills. And this uh, the second syllable. Very good. You're correct. Discuss. Now, even uh, though okay, uh, dis. Okay. Well, here's. All right. Here's something I sh need to point out. You are correct. Very good. Notice that the uh sound is really just like the schwa sound. In this case. Just obviously, we're the pronunciation, the actual phonetic pronunciation is the same, but we say it a little louder, maybe stretch the vowel slightly, and definitely use a higher pitch. Discuss. It's All right. Off. All right. Notice that the unstressed syllable is dis. We, we have an I sound. Still a short, reduced sound. We've got to have this as an I sound, because this is a 
DIS is a prefix. It's a very common yeah. prefix. So you're going to see that, you know, think about like ing at the end of verbs. Running. It has to be an i sound. I don't say runung. I don't use the the schwa sound. I can't really do that because it's an ending. General idea when you have uh, prefixes, suffixes, and especially grammatical beginnings and endings of words. Yeah, okay. So the unstressed syllable very frequently might be a short I or a short E in those cases. Uh, all right. Uh, uh, Heber, uh, how about the next word here? Uh, moral. Okay. And the stress is? And the first, uh, the first syllable. Very good. Um, okay. Moral. Uh, moral. Uh, what? Okay, Hiber. Let's uh -huh. let's get rid of that stress marker. You are correct. You're absolutely correct. What? What if I change this word and add an e? I lost. Uh, could you repeat it? <laughs> What's that? Uh, Do you know this word? No, the mean no. Ah, you are totally correct. With the first word is moral. This is a different word though, morale. Oh. Uh, morale, and uh, it's a different word. The morale of the troops was very low. They had not enough to eat, and many of the soldiers were sick. They had a very low morale. Different word different meaning. All I've done is add this E. Uh, but in this case, morale, um, this is going to be second syllable stress and the mo becomes ma. Morale. morale. Like a schwa sound. All right. Okay. Even though they're similar, very similar words, not very far apart, they sound a, a lot different because the stress changes. Because it's a French word. Is that a French word? Yeah. Hey I don't know either. Is it a French word? It is. Okay. Well, there you go. I, I proved my point without even realizing I was proving my point. I, I didn't even know that. Okay. Thanks. Hey there. All right. Heidi, uh, how about number four? Pretty. Okay. Very good. All right, critic. Where, where's the syllables? The first. Yes. All right. Very good. Critic. Yep. And notice the again the I C a very very much a standard suffix and it has more of a um, more of a uh, uh, I sound, not critic. Critic. Right. Again, it's very. This is very common with the kind of standardized. Prefixes and suffixes. Uh, all right, how about the next word? Courage. Courage. Yes. Courage. The first. Courage. Uh, again with the schwa sound. Very good. Critic. Courage. Same. We can say that they have the same syllable stress pattern. All right? Because that's what they are. They're patterns. So you may hear me refer to these as a syllable stress pattern. Okay, and last one. Uh, Nidair? Contain. Second, second syllable stress. Definitely. Contain. Okay. Mislead. Second, second syllable stress. Yeah, a couple of verbs again. Mislead. Contain. Uh, again, not always, but very common to have that second syllable stress. Uh, okay, let's try some three-syllable words. Uh, let's see if we can figure this out. Uh, all right. Lena, back to you. Oh, okay. Official. Okay. Nepal. Official uh, has the second uh, stressed syllable. Okay, very good. Official. Mm-hmm. Magnify uh, has the first stress. Very good. You're, you're correct. Ah, 
magnify here now here's a, an interesting something that's a little bit interesting um, with these Y endings uh, okay now it's uh, magnify it almost acts as a as a uh, secondary stress magnify secondary unstressed uh... Oh, yeah. Secondary stress uh, syllable, yes. Yeah, because it goes low. Magnify. Magnify. Yeah, yeah. You have to be a little careful with these words that end with a Y. I, I'll, many times it's an I sound, even though it's unstressed, and uh, or you know it's certainly not primary stress. Um, and sometimes it has a, a Y sound. Uh, on occasion, and uh, not a Y sound. Sometimes a Y makes an E sound, like tiny, tiny, for example. Um, all right, so the word tiny. All right, tiny, tiny. Even though the first syllable is stressed in this word, obviously the Y has this E sound. It's not. A schwa or a short sound. That's actually a long sound. So, you, in other words, I'm trying to uh, show you guys that Y's at the end of words, even though they're not primary stress, will sometimes have, often, frequently, they'll have a long vowel sound, I or E. Uh, okay, uh, this is an interesting pair. Uh, Italo. Take a look at these. Air and the second referee, the field syllable. Okay. And the pioneer, the pioneer, pioneer, the, the first pioneer. Uh, well, I don't know, Dallo. <laughs> How about pioneer? I would say this word as pioneer. Oh, the and the second syllable. Pi. No, well, that would be pioneer. Pioneer. No, the the O. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Okay, uh, pioneer. Now here's a tricky little bit of business. Um, again, not every time, not universal. Um, often when we have a double E or E-I-R or whatever, an E sound at the end of the, of the word, but not a Y, like tiny, tiny, uh, referee, pioneer, uh, okay, actually, the primary stress is on the E sound. Referee, pioneer, 17. Doesn't always work. However, it works, I don't know, 90% of the time. But for example, uh, okay, committee, committee, committee. Uh, has first syllable stress. I think we actually saw this word in the first document. Doesn't always work. But it works a lot of the time. Um, but notice something else that's happening here. We have a primary stress later in the word. Referee. Pioneer. What's happening here, and this is another pattern, again, I know I'm, I'm beating a dead horse. I'm saying this over and over again. But it happens frequently when we have a primary stress later in the word, two syllables back. This happens a lot. It's a reoccurring pattern. You have a primary stress at the end of this sentence. The, the syllable in front of it, in this case, fur, very much unstressed, schwa sound even. But the syllable, two syllables in front, referee, referee, 
uh, kind of like um, it will have a secondary stress. And, and actually, this happens quite a lot. Pi, pi, very low, pi, and pi, and pioneer, pioneer. Same thing. All right, this, this is a, a reoccurring pattern where we have a primary stress late, third, fourth, fifth syllable in a word, and two syllables in front will have secondary stress. It's very common. Okay, uh, hey Bear, try our next pair here. Okay, um, uh, uh, this, uh, the number uh, three? Yes, please. Elastic. Uh-huh. And uh, all the, the, the stress is deferred, the first of all, especially in the bow E. Elastic. You think, you think so. so? No, 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 let me, let, let me see. Elastic. Elastic. Yeah, uh, in L-A. Yeah, okay, right. If you're confused about that, remember one of the most important things is the shortness, the duration of the vowel, the length. All right? Try pronouncing the other sounds really fast and see if it makes any sense. Elastic. Elastic. No, that doesn't make sense. Elastic. 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 Uh. Elastic. Yeah, you're right. Uh, it's going to be the second syllable. It, it sounds weird if you said elastic. 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 It sounds weird if you say them fast. That's usually the thing that helps you determine it. Uh, elastique. Elastique. No, that's not it. Can't be the last one either. Uh, all right. Hey, Bear, how about uh, the next one? Uh, optical. Mm -hmm. uh, I said uh, uh, the, the first syllable. I think optical. so. Optical. 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 Definitely. Optical. optical. Yeah, the other two, definitely that schwa unstressed sound. Okay. Very good. Heidi, how about the next set? Heidi? Origin. Ah, okay. The first. Origin. Origin. Even though this second has an I here, it's really pronounced like a schwa. Origin. Origin. First origin. syllable. Origin. origin. Ori not origin. No, not origin. Mm -hmm. Origin. Origin. You, know, you, you were right the first time. Origin. Okay, uh, how about the next one? Proficient. The second. Yeah, definitely. That was perfect. Proficient. 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 Definitely. Uh, okay. One thing I can uh, I say is, well, no, I can't. <laughs> I was going to make a general comment, but no. Again, learning about these syllable stresses, yeah, I really have to prevent myself from making any general comments <laughs> because there's always exceptions to all the, the different ways to tell syllable stress, so I need to just shut up. Okay. Nader, how about number five? Editor. First first syllable stress. Yeah, all right. Very good. Editor. Gratitude. <laughs> Gratitude. Gratitude. Uh, the the one before uh, two two. Uh, gratitude. I don't know. Grat gratitude. Gratitude. Yeah, I think the first one. Gratitude. Gratitude. Yeah, not gratitude. <laughs> gratitude. <laughs> no, that's gratitude. No, that that. <laughs> That's not going to work. Yeah, if you uh, say it as normally as possible, but then if you're having a hard time, think about if you shorten those other vowels, what it's going to sound like. Like, you know, banana. If I shorten it, if I say banana, I'd like a banana. doesn't make sense. Or a b 
banana. <laughs> I like to, I like to have a banana for breakfast. Sounds <laughs> crazy, right? <sighs> all right. Uh, all right. Let's. We've we've got five minutes left. Let's go for. Let's go for it. Let's try some tricky five syllable words. All right. Let's see what happens here. Okay. Uh, Lena, we're we're jumping to five syllables now. Oh, okay. Uh, incompatible. Ah, uh, no. It's correct, no? <laughs> <laughs> no. I mean, the phonetics were right, and but the syllable stress way off. So here, repeat after me. Incompatible. Incompatible. There. Okay. That was lovely. Incompatible. Incompatible. Uh, the stress syllable is third. Third. You are correct. That is correct. Very. And these, oh, by the way, these long words with uh, <laughs> whatever, five, six, seven syllable words, we do tend to really, really emphasize that primary stress. I, I don't know, to make it easier for the listener, I suppose, incompatible. I, I'll make it very much higher, okay, and stretch that vowel sound to make it easier to hear. Uh, notice also, first in is quite low, incompatible. Incompatible. All right, almost has that secondary stress to begin with. Secondary stress, the first. Uh, yeah, incompatible. All right. All right, uh, try the next one. Uh, sociology. Uh -huh. Sociology uh, has uh, one um, stress syllable, sociology, O. In front of the, which O? <laughs> uh, no, uh, the second. <laughs> second O, okay, right, very good. Sociology, sociology, definitely. Sociology. Definitely. Okay. Most important, you know, you really don't have to worry too much about the secondary stress except in compound nouns. Compound nouns or set phrases, it becomes very important. You know, baseball, notebook. It really becomes important because it's important for us to understand as a listener because you're listening for that very high pitch to a low pitch very quickly. Not flowing, but like a stairs, like high, low, very abrupt and fast. So you don't have to worry so much in these long words about the secondary stress, but it, it is important in compound nouns. Um, okay, Atello, can you try the next one? Uh, technological. Wow, oh, good. In L O. Very good. You got it. Stress, you, know. you got and it. Participation in PA, the second. In front PA. of the PA, yeah. Participation. Actually, it's the fourth syllable, but you got it right. That's very good. You notice a pattern here when we have these big, long words? Um, notice where our primary stress is ending up. Uh, third syllable, third syllable, techno lot, third syllable, fourth syllable, farther down, farther into the word, just in general. Oh. Hey, Bear, how about next one? Uh, magnification. I think there are uh, in the cation, the TA. Yep, very good. All right. Try the next one. Examination, uh, examination. Yeah, it's the N A. Again, aha. Uh -huh. Yeah. This is what we're going to be looking at tomorrow. You notice when two words end with the same suffix, the same syllable gets okay. gets stressed. Coincidence? I think not. Actually, mm -hmm. there are patterns which we will be looking at in tomorrow's class. Okay. Um, Okay. Oops. Um, speaking of tomorrow's class, well, I guess we'll have to do that in tomorrow's class because we are about out of time. So. Sorry, uh, Oakley. 
Lena? Uh, uh, examination. Uh, does, um, uh, has it uh, two syllables or one syllable? Oh, mm, stress. stress syllables. Has okay. it secondary syllables too? Uh, right. Syllables. Yes, syllables. I think there's a secondary stress in there as well. Examin examination. Again, two syllables. Exam. Am. In. A. Shun. I believe you're correct. I, I believe that has secondary stress as well. Yes. Um, there is only one primary stress in any word. It doesn't matter. Supercalifragilisticexpialidocious. <laughs> There's only one. And it's in docious. Supercalifragilisticexpialidocious. <laughs> uh, there's only one primary stress, but there can obviously be any number of unstressed, and there's only going to be one primary and one secondary stress in any word. Anyway, we'll, tomorrow we'll talk more about prefixes and suffixes and predicting stress. Thank you all very much. See you next time. Bye-bye. All right.